lot of economic data coming out this week on Saudi Arabia's economy, and they're painting a pretty rosy picture for the kingdom, going to work off several reports and sort of smash them together like a cheeseburger. There's a lot of positivity on Saudi Arabia's broad economic picture, starting at the top. The General Authority for Statistics, GA Stat, said that Saudi Arabia's economy expanded 11.8% in the second quarter of this year. That's year on year, meaning it just com is compared to last year at the same time. That maintains the fastest pace of growth for the Saudi economy since 2011. Of course, high oil prices and output are to credit for a lot of that growth. But beyond oil, Saudi Arabia is seeing positive signs in the non-oil economy as well, which is obviously key for the kingdom's Vision 2030 economic and social reforms. Non-oil GDP gained 5.4%, while the oil economy grew 23.1%, well, compared to last year, according to preliminary estimates. Separately, Standard & Poor's S&P released its headline seasonally adjusted S&P Global Saudi Arabia Purchasing Managers Index, PMI, for the whole economy this week, which is also a mouthful. Through the trend, Though the trend for July was down from June, falling to 56.3% in July from 57 in June, in June, it remained well above the neutral 50 mark that separates growth from contraction. So Richard, zooming in a little bit now, using some fresh data from the Riyadh-based Jadwa Investment, um, which produces a monthly chart book. It's just a really great sort of summation of everything going on with the Saudi economy. We love it. We feature it often on our website, sustg.com, and in our newsletter. Non-oil exports for Saudi Arabia continued rising by almost 27% year-on-year, Jadwa noted. Consumer spending increased by 13.4% and by 11.1% month-on-month with both cash withdrawals and point of sale transactions rising during that month. Cement sales were up 3.7%. I mean, we're just we're just going down the line here, but there's pretty much positivity all throughout the Saudi economy, not just on the top level numbers, but in sort of these individual sectors. And Richard, as we mentioned, we're going to talk in a few minutes with Faisal Durrani from Knight Frank about the kingdom's real estate sector, which really is at an interesting inflection point, And we're going to see some big changes there. But Richard, for this year, and this is the last little stat I'm going to throw in here, just a jumble of stats, stat salad. Um, the IMF has projected, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, has projected Saudi Arabia's economy to grow at 7.6% this year. That's the highest growth rate among world economies for 2022, top in the world. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's it. Saudi Arabia's economy is one of the strongest in the world, if not the strongest right now. It is due to oil, but you are seeing positive non-oil stats. So, more time for Saudi to keep reinvesting and diversifying for uh, to reach its 2030 goals. That's comp comprehensive. That's a good rundown. We, I think we need to call it a stat meza. Stat uh, meza. That's good. Yeah, I like that. That tastes a little better. <laughs> um, no, I don't have much to add to that because I think, you know, the, the news, economic news coming from the kingdom is just uh, un. Yeah, unrelentingly positive at the moment. And I think it's really important, and you touched on it at the end of your, your one big thing, is IMF just recently cut its world GDP outlook for a third time this year for 2022. So, I mean, it was, it, it, it began at 4.42, 4, 4.4% in January. It's now down to 3.2% after two corrections. I mean, and we, we know why. I mean, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and also lockdowns in China. Inflation is dragging very heavily on a lot of, especially emerging, emerging market economies. Um, and your, your point is exactly right. Uh, you know, Saudi Arabia, and let's look at the World Bank. The World Bank covers six regions, and, they, and, and every region, save for the MENA region, Middle East, North Africa, that has, they've backed off on their projections for this year. They've reduced them. So every one of them is, is, is you know, going down except for MENA. And the reality is, in that MENA section, it's really those oil-producing countries that have managed their resources well. And uh, Richard, and you – Oh, I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. Well, well, I mean, you've, Richard, you've made the point – in recent episodes, I think is really interesting. You know, there's sort of a it's sort of a windfall going on right now. Oil prices are high, um, output is high, so obviously that's good for Saudi Arabia's balance sheet. But they're not just turning around and spending it all right now. I mean, you're seeing some fiscal restraint and responsibility. Um, you're just seeing a little bit more of a mature attitude about it from Saudi leadership and decision makers. The other thing that's interesting, I just wanted to throw this in there, um, is inflation is rising in Saudi Arabia, but uh, the government, and, and this has happened in the UAE as well, the government released a couple billion dollars for inflation relief to help tamp that down, knowing that out-of-control inflation here would 
sort of put a damper on this whole party, this meza, as he said. Um, and so it's interesting because that is something that economists are going to be watching in Saudi Arabia with the economy humming this quickly. Um, but yeah, so uh, just just very interesting. And yeah, they're in a really good spot right now. Well, unbeknownst to me, you came over and looked at my notes. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. Yeah, I've got a camera in there and I just I spy on you at all times. <laughs> so I'm a little embarrassed since I'm walking around with all clothes on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um yeah, in this in this environment where uh, really the whole world is struggling except for a, a very small pocket of countries and Saudi Arabia is seeing this this wave of good economic news, the thing, as you mentioned, I've, I've referred to a couple of times, it's the thing that I think is really critical and essential to, to Saudi Arabia's um, maintaining forward momentum when inevitably oil prices go down um, is is what was reflected in Fitch's uh, May 22nd, just if, just last May, their their country report when they affirmed Saudi Arabia's A plus rating, and they said, they said, quote, uh, you know, they have an A plus rating in large part due to projected oil revenue, but also, and this is the money thing, we assume that spending control would broadly persist despite higher oil prices, unquote. And this fiscal discipline is the new thing. I mean, Saudi Arabia's had you know boom and bust cycles. Um, but if it can maintain and it's planning to spend less in 2023, its budget, its projected budget is 20, 2023 is less. But if they can maintain, uh, uh, you know, not necessarily maximal discipline, but really a rigorous control of, of their budget and stay on plan, then this boom can really, uh, you know, channel into something that's lasting. Mm -hmm. And that's the key part for me is that fiscal discipline. Yep. The word economy comes from the Greek word oikos, which means household management. Um, in any household, if you get a big windfall of money, you don't just blow it on stuff immediately. You work on saving it. You apply it to work for you. That's what Saudi Arabia is doing now. It's, it's cool to see. And uh, it's good for all Saudis to see that sort of responsibility. But you also see reinvestment. I mean, you're seeing them invest in the diversification of the economy, which is expensive.